On today's episode, I want to take a closer look at Silver FX Pro 3 found in the new Nick Collection 4. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me today. Today I want to take a closer look at the new uh, Silver FX Pro 3. We're going to look at some of the presets, some of the different things we can do. We're going to work with control points. I found this uh, image on the internet. It's a stock image. I'm going to link it in the uh, description below so you can download it and follow along with me. We're going to have some fun with this image. I thought there's a lot of nice contrast in the zebra here and I, I just like the pose and everything of the zebra. So we're going to try to make this a little more of an artistic style uh, black and white conversion with silver effects pro 3 so let's get started i almost forgot to tell you but the nick collection's on sale right now the new nick collection 4 which includes silver effects pro 3 the all new uh updated version rewritten and also vivesa 3 which is rewritten it's on sale right now for up to 30 percent off uh, you can just click on my affiliate link in the uh, description below it'll take you right to the sale i make a small commission and it helps you to grow my channel and i thank you if you do that Let's go ahead and launch Silver FX Pro 3. Now, we don't have to duplicate the background layer or anything. It'll do that for us. And also, Silver FX and all the NIC uh, products work as smart objects, too, if you like to work that way. I'm just going to go right into the program today, and we're going to just click on Silver FX Pro 3 here from the uh, NIC Select Selective Tool 2. If you don't have that, you can find it under File, under Automate and here it is right here nick selective tool 2 just click on that and it'll bring it up to your desktop i'm going to go ahead and click silver effects pro 3 we'll launch it and we'll get started i really like this image with the black and white stripes on the zebra it's a lot of nice contrast and i, I just like the out of focus background and the shallow depth of field i think it'll look fun for a nice dreamy zebra type image okay and so let's go ahead and look through some of the presets here and see what we get. Now, we start out with a neutral preset, and we could click through these and see what we get here. Sometimes I like to go through presets just to give me an idea of what direction I want to take an image. They're really cool. Let's start exploring. Oh, by the way, you notice I'm on all right now. There's 58 presets here. Then we have classic, modern, 25th anniversary, on Vogue, vintage. But let's just go through some of these in the all category here. And by the way, once you have a preset selected, you can use your up and down arrow to go backwards and forwards on your presets it's nice you don't have to keep clicking them with your mouse that's kind of fun and dreamy this is kind of the look i'm looking for more of a dreamy look but we'll look at them all that one's kind of fun too that's really high contrast and these all these presets are named like this one's called high structure that's cool again i'm looking for that dreamy look and i think i have one in mind here I looked through this before I started the video just to see, but we'll just keep going down quickly through the presets here. Hey, let me know in the comment section below what you think of these presets and do you like the idea that we have a bunch of presets in here to see if we can get our creative juices flowing. Okay, that's fine art print. That's really pretty. I like, I like it. It looks really nice. We've got all these different looks here. Trissel 2. A lot of nice grain. Now, I love, I love grain in uh, black and white photography. And now with this new, uh, this the new uh, film grains that uh, DxO have incorporated into the Nick collection, you know, real authentic film grains, it's really nice. That's kind of fun, cool tones. We're going to keep going through here. I like that too. Very artistic looking. And the frames are cool too. We're going to actually add a frame to this image today. Uh, film Noir. Okay. Very cool, very high contrasty. I kind of like the sepia look here. I think there's one coming up that I really like. I really like this one, but this is the one that I want to settle on right here. I love the dreaminess of it. There's a vignette on it, a light edged vignette, which is adding to the mystery here. And uh, I just think it looks really nice, but I'd like to add a little bit of extra contrast to the zebra's head and a little bit on the body here we're going to work on that to get a little extra contrast and we're going to work with these new control points and just like nick uh vivesa 3 with those new control points with the new uh features where we can adjust luminance and chrominance chrominance to really focus our control points we have that also in here and i think it'll probably come to all the uh software inside of the collection eventually when they rewrite it i think they have plans to rewrite it all i really hope they do but this new update is really a great update 
I'm going to move a little bit quickly through this edit because you know what? Most of the work is done for us in this preset here. We just have to like tweak it up and I'll show you how we can tweak it up. I like the overall adjustments, just the way they're adjusted. And you can see the adjustments that are, that are involved in this preset here. I'm going to go right to control points and let's grab a control point. Let's start out with the black stripes. I'm going to get a stripe and put it, or a stripe. I'm going to get a control point and put it right here in this black stripe. Now, if we want to, we could go ahead and take a look and see what that control point is encompassing by clicking on this little mask icon here, and we can see what it's doing, right? And then, of course, we can make it larger by pulling on the circle, or we could pull on this to make it larger. I think I'm going to go with that size, but let's tweak it a little bit with the luminance and chrominance uh, color selectivity here so we can focus this. So we could take the luminance slider, move it to the left, it'll broaden it out or move it into the right, and look how it focuses on those stripes. Now that's a black stripe, that's a white stripe, you know, because don't forget this is a layer mask and it can be confusing. I, I know, it, it confuses me sometimes, but that's going to be a black stripe right there. And so that's narrowing it pretty well. Let's try this chrominance and see. Let's move it to the left. Let's move it to the right. I think maybe right, right about there looks pretty good. And this is the heads mainly what I'm focused on. We'll add another control point for this area back here in a sec. But now to see the image again, just click on this mask icon. We got the image back. Now what we can do is, let me try adding contrast first. Oh, that's nice. So I'm going to add some contrast. Okay, right there. And let me take the brightness and pull it back to make that stripe darker. Okay, just like so. I think that's looking good. We could come here to compare and see here's the before and here's the after. Or if you just want to see what's happening on the control point, uh, selective adjustments, just come here and uncheck this. Here's the before the control point and there's the after control point. But you see how it's just, you know, darkening or darkening the black stripes up here. It's getting a little dark up here, a little bit it's getting up in there, but I'll fix that in a second. But first off, I'm gonna work on this section, this stripe right here. And to do that, let's grab another control point and let's put it maybe right here, okay? And let me, I'm just gonna start adjusting it. I'm gonna take the brightness, turn the brightness down. Yeah, something like so. Maybe give it a little bit more contrast. Yeah, that's helping it. Okay, and now let's try working with the luminance and chrominance without looking at a mask and see what we can do here. So let's move this into the right. See how we can narrow that in? So you don't always have to put the mask on. You can also just view it uh, without a mask and see what kind of a direction you need to go. Let's try this. Yeah, that's focusing it. See when I pull this chrominance in here? See how it like kind of lets go of this area right over here? And I kind of like that. I think that's nice. So let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. So far, so good. And a lot of the work is already done for us through the help of the preset. So now this area right here, remember I said it looks a little bit dark here. Let's put another control point right here. So I'm going to click and grab a control point and let's go for this area right here. Now, You'll notice here it says control point nine. The reason it says that, you might say, well, Dave, why doesn't it say control point three? Well, when I'm working on a video, sometimes I'll stop and try things, and I did that. So that's why it's up to control point nine, because I've been playing around here behind the scenes, okay? Like the Wizard of Oz, I'm behind the curtain doing some things here, okay? So we can make this influence a little bit bigger. I'm just going to drag the circle, or we could uh, just grab this right here and drag it to make it bigger. But let's make it larger. I'm going to even come over into here a little bit because I'm thinking maybe it'll lighten this area up here because what I want to do is lighten this. So I'm going to take the brightness control and start to drag it to the right and just, yeah, and it's doing that. You see, it's even moving into here a little bit, which I like. I want to just lighten that up a little bit. I want that dreamy look back there. I might have gone too much. So let's just pull it back just, just a tiny wee bit. I think right there. And I think that that looks really nice. Now let's click on our selective adjustments. Here's the before, so get a look. And it looked really nice, but here's the after. But just a little bit of tweaking with control points and we're there. There's some nice grain that's part of this preset. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Uh, right now we're at a one to two. 
So if you click right here, we can change this to like a two to one or a three to one. Let's zoom in and see this little loop here. You can take this thing and you can drag this around, but take a look at that grain here. This is a uh, part of the preset. Now this is not one of the new film grains. It's just a regular type grain like silver effects had before that you could add to your image. And I'm not going to mess with a film grain. I'm going to leave this here because I think it looks really beautiful and I'm happy with that. Now to go back to the, uh, uh, one to two or to fit screen. Well, let's go to fit. Let's just click fit. Now we can see the whole image here, but doesn't that look cool? That dreaminess around it. Now, if I wanted to go back to that one to two, cause sometimes I like to do that. Cause I like to get a different, um, you know, I don't like it being tight up around the edges. So let's go to one to two. See, it just pulls it in a little bit and it kind of helps us to see here. Cause what I want to do is I want to add a border right here in silver effects pro three to finish this off. But before I do that, Let's go down here because I wanted to show you the vignette. Okay, so right now it says vignette is off, but there's really vignette on. This is vignette presets. So if I click this drop down, you can see there's a bunch of different presets. And if you hover over these, it'll change for you, okay? But this was adjusted manually, whoever made this preset. And the amount is up to 92% and the uh, shape is set to rectangle. So if I take this slider and move it to the left, Watch the edge start to get darker. See that? When I get to uh, zero, there's no vignette at all. If I start to move it to the left of zero, we start to put a darker vignette. But I don't like the darker vignette on this one. And I like the light one because it's kind of dreamy looking. And it was, I think, at 92%. And I just, for this image, I think it really works. Some people don't like uh, light edge vignettes, and I generally don't. But for this image, I think it really, really works. And it doesn't re it just looks ethereal to me and it looks very artistic and like i said at the start that's what i was going for so i just wanted to show you that and you can change the size of the vignette as well but next let's go and add a border so let's come down here to image borders we can click this little uh, carrot or triangle whatever you want to call it let's go ahead and click this drop down here right now it's off and all our borders are in here and there's like 14 different borders and these borders are really nice and if we hover over these borders, we can see the border. And I have one in mind here because, again, I was experimenting. And it is this guy right here, border five. I'm going to go ahead and click it. Now, we could come here with the borders and we could change the size of the border or we could change the spread. Uh, let's do the spread here. Right now, the spread's at zero. I'll move it to the right and see what it's doing. That black line is just spreading out or spreading in so you have a lot of control here so you can mess mess with the spread if you double click these sliders they'll go back to the default setting now the size right now is at zero percent we can move it to the right and it'll come in or move it to the left and it'll move out and you could take it the whole way out and just have that little slight edge in there so you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of control i'm going to double click this because i like that border right there and I like the fact that the edge is not white, it's yellow, because the paper would be yellow. We would want that there. I wouldn't want that to be bright white up against that sepia type look in the background, which is really nice. And then there's also one called roughness. So you can change the roughness of that edge. See how that edge gets rougher when you move it to the right? And if you move it to the left, it becomes a lot more clean looking. So again, a lot of flexibility. I'm going to leave it right in the center because I like it. I really love the way this thing turned out. Now, I didn't tell you this, but let's go over to the presets. If these presets over here bother you, see this little uh, triangle right here? If you click it, you can remove those presets. So once you've picked a preset, or if you're not going to use presets, why have them up there? You can get rid of them and because they may distract you. May or may not. It's, it's totally up to you if you want to get rid of them. But I thought I'd point that out. Now, if we come up here to the compare area, we have different ways we can compare. We can... Uh, use this let's click on this icon right here and we can see top to bottom okay and let's go ahead and we can do side by side top to bottom or we can go to this guy here and we have this little uh, split screen deal where we can drag it and see what it looks like that way or we could come here to the compare and with the left click of the mouse and you have to hold it down you'll see the original image that's just the neutral conversion comes into silver effects pro 3 it does a, a standard neutral conversion on it and then you have to tweak it from there in other words no adjustments on it okay just a bland black and white neutral conversion 
Um, when I release compare, you can see what we've done to it. And I love it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. I think this really came out nice. Give this a try. I think you're going to love this new uh, Silver Effects Pro 3. I'm going to send this back into Photoshop. But before I do, pay attention to this area right down here. See where's the save preset? Anytime you make a bunch of adjustments, you know, you do a whole bunch of work here. You add uh, borders. You add film grains. You know, you... You've done different things and to the image and you want to save that out as a preset so you don't have to do that hard work again. You can click on save preset, give it a name, and you'll be able to call that back up and use it again on more images. And that's really fun. And once we are totally done, we can click apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. When I click apply, notice how quickly this now sends us back into Photoshop. This is a big improvement. So I'm going to click apply. And we are back in Photoshop. Wasn't that quick? Is it just me or is this selective tool bothering you? If it is, there's a couple things you can do to it. See these uh, two squares right here? You can click here and kind of minimize it or and click again to maximize it back out. Or you can click this negative here and it'll pop it down in the lower left hand corner. And then when you open it back up by clicking this area right here, it'll put it right back where you left it. So it gets it out of the way, which is kind of nice. If you totally want to get rid of it, just click the X here and it's gone. But don't worry, you can bring it back up. Just come back to file, come down to automate and click on Nick Selective Tool 2 and you'll bring it right back up. I just thought I'd point that out. But we started out today with this image which was a really cool image. And don't forget, you can download it and follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. And we end up with this image and I'm really happy with it. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this one today and give this one a try. This is a fun image to turn into a black and white, in my opinion. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.